Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. This concept was actually recommended to me by a recent subscriber who joined on a stream that I did earlier today, where I was asked how I was planning to improve at chess, especially since my chess league starts up in about a week, and it's going to be very difficult. I need to improve to match the level of the league that I'm going to be participating in. So... I was thinking about the things that I could actually do to improve. And one of the things that came up in conversation on the stream was chess visualization. And this subscriber, thank you very much, sent me a very interesting idea via Discord where you could basic where I could basically create videos where which would help people to improve their chess visualization. The way that we can actually go about this, we can do it in many different ways. Um, today, I think I'll be essentially playing out three or four moves at a time where I'll be dictating the move notations to you guys. You can then visualize what's happening in your head and then I will show the moves on the board and then we'll play out the next three or four moves. We'll be doing two games in this video. Both of these games are classical games of mine that I played in the previous chess league season. We were in, a, we were in Division 2 going into Division 1, so it's going to be a lot harder. But these are very interesting games. I think they should be difficult enough so that it's not just, you know, a bunch of pieces get exchanged and there's not a lot to think about. But not too wild so that it's impossible to visualize. Let me know what you guys think of this concept, whether you think it can be useful for you or not, or whether you'd like some adjustments and tweaks made to the thing itself, or how I go about presenting it. So I think this is a really cool idea. Let's get into it. So, game one. I played this, I can't actually remember when, um, I can't remember the date, but I was rated just over 1900, my opponent rated just under 1900, and this was a fairly quick game. The third, we'll do the first three moves, okay? So I'm not going to show them on the board. I'm just going to dictate what they are. You guys visualize in your head what the first three moves are, and then I'll show them, and you can see whether you've got it correct. I'll try not to do it too quickly, but if it's too slow for you, you can always speed up the video. Okay, so pawn e4, pawn e6, pawn b3. Pawn d5, bishop b2, knight f6. Okay, so those are the first three moves for each side. It was pawn e4, pawn e6, pawn b3, pawn b d5, bishop b2, knight f6. So you should have an idea of what that looks like in your head now. It's a kind of a non-typical set of moves, so it should make it a little bit harder, which is good. E4, E6, B3, D5, Bishop B2, Knight F6. Of course, calculating an opening out like this may not necessarily be done in a real game, but from here on out, if you're playing a classical game, a rapid game, maybe even a blitz game, you should be calculating and visualizing the positions that can arise in your head. So we'll do the next three moves now. Pawn E5. Knight F to D7, Queen to G4, Pawn to C5, Pawn to F4, Knight to C6. Again, let me know if I'm doing this too slowly or too quickly. If it's too slow, you can always speed it up. And I suppose if it's too quick, you can always slow the video down. But let me know what the pacing's like. I'll go through that once more, and then I'll show you what the moves are. So pawn to e5, knight f to d7, queen to g4, pawn to c5, pawn to f4, knight to c6. So get that position in your head, and let's see if you got it correct. Pawn e5, knight f to d7, queen to g4, which was actually a mistake, but it didn't really get punished. Pawn to c5, pawn to f4, knight to c6. So if you got this position, good job. It will probably get a little bit harder as we continue going on. And of course it's easier because you can see the position that we're leading off from each time. 
You can also, if you want to give yourself a real challenge, is just not watch any of the video footage and literally just listen to the moves and try and visualize the whole game um, from start to finish. But of course, that is difficult, and I struggle to do that myself. I can play by blindfold chess, and I have done quite a lot, but it, it's not easy. Not easy. For an entire game, it's tough. Okay, we'll do the next three moves. So we have knight to f3, pawn to f5, queen to g3, knight to b6, knight to c3, pawn to a6. I'll go through that again quickly. Knight f3, pawn f5, queen g3, knight b6, knight c3, pawn a6. Got that position in your head? Let's go. Knight f3, f5, and typically you have to take on person. But in this case, I didn't, which was the better option. Queen g3, knight b6, knight c3, pawn a6. Very interesting game, kind of non-standard. And the fact that a lot of pieces aren't getting traded off makes it more difficult to visualize because there's just simply more going on, more pieces to memorize the positions of. So hopefully this is useful. Let's get into the next three moves. We have bishop to e2, bishop to d7, knight to g5, bishop to e7, pawn to h4, knight to d4. Do that again. Bishop to e2, bishop to d7, knight to g5, bishop to e7, pawn to h4, knight to d4. Got the position? Let's go. Bishop e2, bishop d7, knight g5, bishop e7, pawn h4, and knight to d4. This was kind of a crazy game. Um, this was really, really interesting how the game went. There was lots of mistakes going on from both sides, but it has kind of a nice finish, which we may do more than three in a row towards the end because there's some forced sequences, which should make it a bit easier. Okay, we'll do the next three moves. So we have knight takes h7, rook takes h7, queen to g6, check, king to f8, queen takes h7, knight takes c2, check. So that's knight h7, rook h7, queen g6, king f8, queen h7, knight c2. Got the position? Okay. Let's go. Knight h7, rook h7, whoops, queen g6, king f8, queen h7, knight c2. This was kind of a crazy game. And there is five more moves left in the game. So what we're going to do is do all five, because I think you guys should be able to visualize all five from here, because it's pretty forced. So, king d1, knight takes a1, queen h8 check, king f7, bishop h5 check, g6, as in pawn g6, queen h7 check, king f8, bishop takes g6, bishop e8, queen h8 checkmate. We'll do that again. So we have king d1, knight takes a1, queen h8 check, king f7, bishop h5 check, pawn g6, queen h7 check, king f8, bishop takes g6, bishop e8, queen h8 mate. So I know that's a lot to do in one go, but let's see if you got it right. King d1, knight a1, queen h8, king f7, bishop h5, pawn g6, queen h7, king f8, bishop g6, bishop e8, queen h8 mate. The reason I did more than three moves on that last one was because all the way back here, I had to calculate that entire sequence and use visualization to realize 
that I had a checkmating attack if my opponent played into my trap, right? So this is where visualization is so crucial because if I couldn't see that far ahead, it's like eight or nine moves. A lot of it is forcing, yes, but you have to be able to like detach from the current position to such a degree that you can see a prolonged series of moves if you guys get what I'm saying. I hope that was useful. We'll move on to the second game now and we'll do it in pretty much the same format again. Please let me know if you're enjoying the video. If this is your first time on the channel and you're finding this really useful, please drop a like and subscribe. I post not only entertaining but also educational chess content. I mean a few times a week normally, but it kind of just depends on my schedule because it's kind of busy. Um but it's great to have you on board. Let's get into the second game and I just Skip to the end, so spoiler alert. We'll do the first four moves. So we have pawn e4, pawn e6, pawn b3. This should be sounding familiar. Pawn d5, bishop b2, d takes e4, knight to c3, knight to f6. So I'll play that out now. Have the position in your head. We have e4, e6, b3, d5. Bishop b2, and then different to the previous game where knight f6 was played, we have de4, knight c3, and knight to f6. Of course, this is opening theory. If you know the opening theory, then it's not going to be that difficult for you to calculate it and visualize it because you've already seen the position. But my opponent didn't know what this was. I remember he spent ages in the opening because it's a weird opening, but I know it. So I can visualize this position a lot easier because it's familiar to me. If it's not familiar to you, it's going to be harder to visualize. So. Let's continue. Next three moves. Queen e2, bishop e7, pawn g4, knight c6, queenside castle, knight d4. Get the position in your head. Queen e2, bishop e7, pawn g4, knight c6, queenside castle, knight d4. I definitely misplayed the opening here. But the quality of the game is kind of irrelevant for the purpose of this video. And I have analyzed this game in a very old video. Must have been one of like the first 10 videos on the channel. So I'm sure it's absolutely horrific. But I'm sure you can find it if you want to. <laughs> Next three moves. Uh, let, again, let me know if you like the format of this or if you think it's a silly idea or if the idea just needs tweaking in the execution. Okay. Queen e1. Knight takes g4. Knight takes e4, pawn f5, pawn h3, knight f6. Let me go over that again. We have queen e1, knight g4, knight e4, pawn f5, pawn h3, knight f6. Get the position in your head. I'm going to play it out now. Queen e1, knight g4, knight e4, pawn f5. Pawn h3, knight f6. This again, it was a crazy game. I was very, very happy about it after it was done. And I remember the exact like bit, like room I was in and the board and the view and everything. I remember all of it because I, I won this game pretty quickly time-wise, which was very good for the rest of the members of my team because it meant we were already in the lead. Okay. Next three moves we have knight to g5 pawn to h6 knight 5 to f3 knight takes f3 knight takes f3 queen to d5 get the position in your head you can go over that again if you want just rewind but let's get to the position knight g5 pawn h6 knight 5 to f3 Knight f3, knight f3, queen d5. And I, by the way, I was so happy with this game because back in this position, I had calculated this variation. I remember I calculated this variation and I was like, I bet he plays queen d5 here. And if he does, he's screwed. I, I remember thinking that. And queen d5 is not the best move. It's not a terrible move. But it gives me kind of a knockout blow or thereabout. So this is again why visualization and calculation is so important because 
back in this position. Instead of moving my knight, I attack his knight. And there's, very, there's loads of different lines I have to calculate. What if he takes? What if he retreats to h6? What if he retreats to f6? What if he retreats to e5? Etc. There's loads of things he can do here. I, I calculated this variation. And after knight f3, knight f3, queen d5. You can try and figure out what the move here is, actually. Uh, it's a bit of a mini puzzle within this. But very nice move. Um, again, kind of big-headed, but I think it was a really nice move. And we're going to do the next three moves for visualization now. So, ready? Knight e5. Bishop d7. Bishop c4. Queen e4. Queen g1, rook g8. Okay. I'm going to go through that now. Get the position in your head. Rewind if you want to listen to it again. Knight e5, which is a brilliant move because you're trying to sacrifice the rook, but you just absolutely die if you do that. Bishop d7, bishop c4, which means the rook is protected. Queen e4. Queen g1, best move by the way. Rook g8. Okay, so if you got that position, very well done. It's tricky because there's so many pieces on the board doing a lot of things. It's very congested. But again, if you want to improve at chess, you need to be able to calculate these lines. It is absolutely imperative to improving to see these ideas and then actually be able to calculate that they work. Okay, we're going to do the next three moves now. Get ready. We have queen g6 check, king d8, rook h to e1, queen to h4, knight takes d7, knight takes d7. Rewind if you want to hear that again. If not, have the position in your head. I'm going to go for it now. Queen g6 check, king d8, rook h to e1, queen to h4. Knight d7. Knight d7. By the way, look at just how aesthetically pleasing this position is. I was, I was so happy with this. <laughs> like, this just looks amazing. Uh, again, congrats if you got that correct. There are only four more moves left in this game. So, I'm going to do the next four moves. If you can visualize it correctly, very well done. Let's do it. We have bishop takes e6. Rook to e8, bishop to f7, rook to f8, bishop takes g7, queen takes f2, rook takes e7, king takes e7, black resigns. Rewind if you want to hear that again. If not, have the position in your head. Bishop e6, rook e8, bishop f7, rook f8, bishop g7, queen f2, rook e7, king e7, queen e6. And I believe my opponent resigned in this position, or maybe he let me play on, but basically, you sack the rook, which was again a brilliant move, king has to retreat, you win this, if you take back it's mate, so you can't take the bishop back, and there is obviously just nothing you can do here as the black pieces. So, two very interesting games. I hope it was not only kind of entertaining in terms of the games themselves. I wanted to pick some nice ones rather than really, really boring ones. But let me know if you have any kind of preference in the comments below. I hope this was useful. If you want the format changing or if you think the idea itself is just kind of bad, then please leave me some feedback in the comments. I thought this was a really, really good idea. So thank you very much to... I can't find his name now. But the guy that recommended me this idea in the Discord, you know who you are. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.